advanced math lesson fifty nine advanced logarithm problems and the color of the white house we should just rename this lesson to all about logarithms the color of the white house is a misnomer they're just trying to it's an analogy they use to talk about logarithms whose exponents are logarithms and I'll talk more about that when we get there let's talk about advanced logarithmic problems um, advanced logarithmic problems are just combinations of two different log rules and I think they threw one of these at your last at you on your last test uh, but we have two different logarithmic rules that we use one is that if we have a number being multiplied by a logarithm we can change that number to become the exponent of uh, the logarithmic number so this would be three times log base 10 of X we could actually rewrite this as log base 10 of X cubed right so that's the first rule uh, the second rule are the product and uh, uh, difference rules or the product in the uh, um, division rules or the sum and subtraction rules which is if we have two logarithms being subtracted they can be divided uh, or if we have two logarithms being added they can be multiplied so uh, since these are being subtracted those will get rewritten as a division problem so we'll have log base 10 of 16 divided by 2 so these are two different rules that we used in different equations, but now we're seeing them all wrapped together in one equation. That's that's what they're calling advanced. So just be on the lookout for multiple rules when you're solving these problems. Now the next rule that we've got is we have both sides of an equation written to a logarithm on the same base, which means that I can eliminate the logarithms, and I can say that x cubed is equal to uh, 16 over 2. 16 over 2 equals 8. If x cubed is equal to 8, then x is equal to the cube root of 8, which is 2. So no new rules are being learned here. We're just combining a bunch of different, well, two different rules into one problem. We'll do one more example. Okay, next problem. Uh, now we've got both the different rules being applied on the same side of the equation, and our equation is equal to a whole number instead of another logarithm. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, apply this exponent rule first, and this will be rewritten as log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3 of x minus 2. Now, uh, notice I'm not going to use a division rule on this x minus 2 because it's in parentheses, it's one number. I am going to use the division rule on these two different logarithms, right? Because it's when we have logs being subtracted from other logs that we can use the division rule. So this subtraction is going to get rewritten as log base 3 of x squared over x minus 2. And then remember, all of that is equal to the whole number 2. Uh, from here, we just got to solve for x, or, yeah, hold on, wait a second. Um, if this is division, do I want to multiply? Hold on. Uh, no, because I have a logarithm. Okay, that's right. So on equations, see, this is the other thing. It's been a while since we've done these, but on equations where there's a log on one side and no log on the other, what we do is we take the base and we raise it to the exponent of the whole number on the other side and then remove the logarithm. So what this does is it rewrites our equation like this. We end up getting x squared over x minus 2 equals 3 squared, right? So those problems used to be a lot simpler. Now we've got some more complex numbers in our logarithm. Now from here we can go ahead and, uh, and solve. So 3 squared is just going to give me 9 if I multiply each side by x minus 2, it'll cancel off to the left side. Alright, so then I've got x squared equals 9 times parentheses x minus 2. That's going to become 9x minus 18 equals x squared. From here, I've got a quadratic. I can either use complete the square, uh, quadratic formula, or zero factor theorem. Let's try zero factor theorem because that's usually the easiest. Uh, so we'll rewrite this set equal to 0. So that's going to be x squared minus 9x plus 18 all equals 0. And I check to see if I can factor this. All right. So x and x, that means same, negative. All right. And let's see here. 2, oh, wait, if I do 6 and 3, hmm. 
Yeah, 6 and 3. So if I minus 6, I minus 3. Those multiply to 18, add up to negative 9. That equals 0. And using 0 factor theorem, we have to use the opposite of our roots. So our possible answers are 3 comma 6. <coughs> so that one took us off on a little sidetrack using quadratics. Uh, but the main thing is the logarithmic moves. Because then this is just a different type of equation that we've already been solving. So if you can clear the logarithms and get to that form, then it becomes a pretty simple zero factor theorem problem. So that's it for advanced logarithm equations. Watch out for quadratics. Uh, and then from what it looks like in the book, all the quadratics you're going to get from your log equations are going to be factorable. It doesn't look like they're going to throw any that make you use quadratic formula or complete the square, which is a good thing. So no complex roots for those log problems yet. Now let's talk about the color of the White House. Uh, do I need a new sheet of paper? Okay, so this is our color of the White House problem. In other words, it means we're going to be using logarithms as exponents, which is a little, um, if you think of it, it's kind of like inception as far as logarithms, because logarithms are a way to express exponents or numbers that would be exponents of a certain base number. So, and that, that's kind of why they use the analogy, the color of the White House. Um, the book says, if the color, the color of the White House is white, what is the color of the Red House? Well, using that form of logic, the Red House would be the color red. And that's what they're saying here. If 5 to the exponent of log base 5 is 14, then the answer is 14. Pretty much they're saying 5 to a number whose exponent is 14 at the base of 5 uh, is just going to end up being 14. It, it's kind of like a, a redundant statement almost. Uh, but what we learned from this is the very quick rule, which is that if you have a number to a logarithm, whose base is the same number as the base number, they cancel out and you're left with uh, the, logarithm as your, the logarithm as your answer. Um, so like, we can even do this with the number e. Uh, if we have you know, e to the natural log of 14, natural log is just log of e, so those would cancel and that equals 14. Now let's do the other uh, instance, which is where if we have something to the same base, right? So if we had log base 5 of 5 to the power of 3, what does that equal? Well, let's go ahead and do this like an equation for a second. Uh, if we were to try to solve this equation, we'd have to take this base, put it up to that exponent, right? And then that would remove the logarithm. So we'd have 5 cubed equals 5 to the power of x. And it's not hard to figure out what x is. x is going to be 3. So 3, uh, three equals x. Uh, and that's essentially what we're seeing here, is that if you have a log to the base of a number to an exponent, you can just cancel these, and the exponent becomes your answer again. So it's kind of like, you know, I like to call it the rule of touching logarithms, uh, which is if the base numbers match, and they're touching as far as exponents or as far as base and base, uh, they cancel out. Uh, let's do an example problem from your book. Let's see here. They give us 42 to the exponent of the log of 42, base 5. So, rule of touching logarithms. I have a base number to an exponent with the same base number. That cancels out. The answer is 5. Right? That one's pretty simple. Um, let's do a trick one. So this one's a little bit tricky. This this will be fun. Makes your brain work a little bit harder. So let's say we have 9. Uh, to the log base 3 of the number 5. How can I simplify this? So this one takes a little bit of a logical work. And the key is that 9 is a perfect square, and I can rewrite 9 as a number to an exponent of base 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this problem as 3 squared, which is the same number as 9, I'm just writing it a different way, uh, to the log base 3 of 5. Now, if you remember, when we have a number outside of a log, then what we do is... So right now, the, the rule of touching logarithms does not apply, right? Because there's this 2 in the way. They're not touching. There's a 2 in between them. But I can use my rule of logarithms to rewrite this by making that the exponent, right? So when I do that, what I actually have is 3 log base 3 of 5 squared. My logarithms are now touching. My answer is 5 squared, or... 25. Right? So rule of touching logarithms, if you don't seem to have the same base, think of it as a square or a cube. 
uh, you might have the same base and then make sure that you can make them touch. Any other tough ones? Um, let me see here. Ooh, okay. This is another good example. This will probably be the last one that I do. Okay, I lied. There's two, but they're quick and they're good examples. So we'll start with this one on the left. 10 to the power of 4 times log base 10 root 3. Uh, first logarithmic rule, we don't have touching log base 10s yet because this 4 is in the way. So I'm going to move the 4, right? Uh, and then this root 3. Again, I have to find a way to rewrite this as an exponent. Square root of 3 becomes 3 to the power of 1 half. So I have 10 log base 10, rewriting root 3 as 3 to the exponent of 1 half, right? And then that's being times the exponent of 4. Rule touching logarithms is in effect. Those cancel. So now all I have to do is simplify this. 4 times 1 half is 4 halves, which equals 3 squared. Final answer of 9. Pretty cool. All right. <clears throat> and then the next example right here, uh, 3 to the log base 3 of 4 plus log base 3 of 5. Uh, so this is a, a multiplication or a product rule of logarithms. So I'm going to rewrite this exponent as 3 log base 3. And the reason why I'm going to rewrite it is because I could use the log base 3 rule here, but then I have 4 plus log base 3 of 5. And there's another log base 3 I can't get rid of. But if I rewrite it with a product rule, I can get rid of all the log base 3s. So the product rule would change it to log base 3 of 4 times 5. Right? Then I have touching logarithms. Those cancel. 4 times 5 equals 20. That's my answer. All right. So we learned how to combine some logarithmic rules. We just learned a couple new rules about logarithms. And that's all there is for Lesson 59. If you have any questions, let me know on Moodle, and I will see you in class.